you said my best friend, Alondra. You didn't say that on mine. Well, I don't know. The introduction one at the first episode was kind of enough. Like, it's clear you're one of my best friends. <laughs> well, not clear enough for put you. Put it in writing and we'll talk. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm Lauren. Which, speaking of friends, mm -hmm. we're here today to talk about friends, friendships, and with friends like these, in some of these stories, with friends like these, who needs them? I don't know what your stories are, but the ones that I found... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, yours weren't happy either. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't. We like, we actually really tried, you guys, to find wholesome, happy friend stories. But when people turn to Reddit, you are in desperate need yeah, of advice so and help and just an opinion on your problems. So mm -hmm. finding positive, happy friendship stories was very difficult. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know if we have any today. So. So, but mine are a little bit different because they're not, it's, it's a question of the friendship, but a lot of them are also bringing in the significant other into the picture too. Yeah. A lot so, of mine as well. Yeah. So not all of the friendships are bad in mine. There's just some turmoil going on in some way, shape or form. Okay. But me and Morgan's are not hard. We've never gotten in a single fight in our entire lives. That's a. That's a bold faced lie. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> no, I feel like every friendship like has its own battles, its own fights, and you almost you need little tiffs here and there to grow yeah. and become better friends yeah. and support each other better. It's how you communicate after the fact. Exactly. Recognize each other's feelings. Yeah. Acknowledge. Listen. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's an acronym out there somewhere. Mm. But um, yeah, friendships. Let's get into these. There, Let's do it. There's some crazy ones today. Friends, friendship. Uh, I don't know. I feel like friends, especially as you get older, with having friends living in different cities now and being so far apart from a lot of our college friends, like friendships can be very hard to maintain, especially if people get significant others and just kind of we all end up going down our own little life paths, um, which is totally fine. And some friendships you outgrow, but I don't know if this is just me, but I feel like there's a lot of pressure to like, especially at our age, to have like good, solid friendships. Hmm. Do you feel like that ever? Or is that something that like even crosses your mind? I've never really thought about that, to be honest. Yeah. I don't know why. And this is like, I always see these ADHD videos on TikTok because I'm targeted appropriately, I guess. <laughs> but I saw this one video where it was like, if you've ever, like, do you constantly question if your friends really like you? Like, do you ever um, hang out with a group of your friends and like wonder if you even fit in? And I'm like, fuck. And then I saw another video um, recently that talked about like, being the least favorite friend and like, oh my God. and how <laughs> you have, you can have like so much trauma associated with that. And it's like, were you the friend that if there was five of you and were you the one that always got asked to take the picture or if there were six friends and five fit in a car, were you the one that always worried about getting left out? <laughs> and I'm like, literally still when, what? yeah, still. And I'm like, when we're about to call like Ubers and like Uber XLs, I'm always just like, Please, someone pick me. Oh, <laughs> I still like it. Just is, is that what they mean by pick me girls? No, oh. those are not pick me girls. Mm. These are just sad. Are my friends my friends girls? That what is a pick me girl? We're gonna get into pick me girls on another episode. Okay, I'll save it for that. Okay, but essentially, just like a girl that goes out of her way to like show up other girls so that guys will pick her guys will oh. find her more attractive like she'll put other girls down or kind of like agree with like a man's perspective over what you know a perspective that would benefit her as a woman um so pick me girls just kind of sacrifice their own damn that's not what i thought i yeah. would see it in comments yeah um you know top comments on tiktok and i never looked into it 
Yeah. And for some reason, I never got the for you that <laughs> showed me what it meant. Yeah, so. that's a that's a pick me gal. But friendships, yeah. So I have a, just a lot of friendship trauma. I think too, I've had some bullying experiences and having to cut really toxic friends out. So this is like my topic. I'm a content expert on this one. So I posted a a story like on our Instagram account and was like, does anyone have any questions or problems or stories like they want to talk about in regards to friends? And this one that got written in by one of the fam like really struck a chord with me. So they go, my best friend's boyfriend and I don't get along. I've tried everything, but recently at her birthday party, I wore a crop top and he out loud made comments in front of her and everyone there about me. Looking like a high-end escort, looking like I was wearing a towel, called me a whore and slutty and made jokes all night at my expense for a party that I spent time and money on for her and she didn't defend me and laughed along with him. And when I brought it up to her the next day about how hurt I was, she just fed me his lame-ass excuse. Not sure how I should feel about this six-year friendship now. What a dick. Yeah. I, I can understand if he just said one comment and he thought he was being funny and then it kind of took it back and realized that, yeah, maybe that's not a cool thing to say. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then move on from there. But he clearly is a fucking asshole. Calling someone a high-end escort is yeah yeah it's, i don't know like you have to really no there's your, never i can't even picture a situation where that rolls off the tongue and everyone starts laughing you look like a fucking slut like yeah what, right a especially party like what? yeah i i'm trying to think because i know sometimes people make stupid jokes intended just to be playful yeah and so that's why i'm trying to think how he could have phrased it in a way that maybe was a little bit more um, trying to just be like playful with her. I can't picture one. <laughs> I, I like, There's especially, no, especially that he didn't have any remorse after the first initial comment he and then going. He, yeah. And he could probably see that she wasn't having fun with it. She didn't like it. Why don't you stop? That's when you realize it's time to backtrack. Yeah. What do you think about the friend though? What a bitch. La laughing along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, first of all, like I would never date someone that would talk about my friends in this no. way. I think like, that in itself is a big red flag. But if I was in the situation and my boyfriend like got super drunk and was just being a, a yeah. goofball like, and said something like this about my friends, he immediately would get called out. Right. I would immediately say, hey, yeah. like, that's not acceptable. Pull yeah. him aside, have a chat, be like, are you okay? Like, do we need to mix in a water? Mm -hmm. Do we need to go take a nap? Like, yeah. what is going on with you? Because that's not okay to let your guy, for, like your yeah. boyfriend, man, I husband, whatever, ever talk about your friends like that. I even, um, Jeff one time was jokingly calling out Alejandra because she, with her dirty shoes, stepped on my yoga mat that he just had bought for me. <laughs> and he's obsessed with aloe now. So he's like wanted to cherish it. And even that I snapped back at Jeff and I was like, don't, I, I don't care if you're joking. Yeah. I was like, just don't. No. And, and Alejandra was like, no, it's okay. It's funny. Like, I feel the exact same way. So it was fine. But I just can't imagine not checking my my boyfriend if he, like, spoke to my friend in any way that, yeah. would, you know, was not okay. Well, and that's the one thing I think our friend group is really, really good about. I think we all really cherish our friendships. And I guess we have all, like, we all go through those phases. When you get a new boyfriend or you get, you know, a new partner, you're always, like, in this honeymoon phase initially. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing about our friend group that we've always been really good about is making sure we're still putting an effort and maintenance into mm -hmm. our relationships and our friendships. And we are very good about just taking care of each other and, you know, being very supportive and having each other's backs at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I can't even imagine this because yeah. six year Same. friendship is that's a like a decent length for a friendship. Like, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I think it's really unfortunate. I replied back and I was just like, your friend, like, sounds like she's trying to be like a cool girl for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Like, you know, the Gone Girl, the cool, like the cool girl. The Gone Girl? Like in Gone Girl, the movie, mm -hmm. she describes like what a cool girl is. Mm. She's like the girl that goes along with everything, laughs mm. at his jokes, mm. tries to be cool and chill and hang with the guys. Yeah, I only saw that movie once and I kind of blocked it from my memory, so. Yeah, you get traumatized by that. But, I do. But yeah, definitely not acceptable. I um, I think if this was me and my friend, I would, I don't think you need to like necessarily cut her out. 
I don't know if it's to that point for you, but yeah, I guess it, it's like if she comes to her senses and realizes that it, yeah, you know, because the fact that she was just kind of responded with feeding excuses, mm-hmm. um, you need to acknowledge where you went wrong. Like I, like I said, yeah. I understand sometimes people make jokes that don't go correctly or go the way that they wanted to, but this sounds like it was not. This was a whole different level of disrespect. Yeah, I think I would just put some distance like yeah. between you and this friend because. At the end of the day, she doesn't sound like she's being the best one. So might as well try to focus on other relationships that might be healthier. So this is another one sent in by a listener. And she literally created a little Am I the Asshole title. Aww. So she goes, Am I the asshole for not wanting to go to my boyfriend's best friend's wedding? All the names are fake. I've been with my boyfriend, Jimmy, for a year and a half. And we've been living together for six months now. I love him so dearly, and we have a great relationship. He has a rather large friend group, and I get along with pretty much everyone. There's this girl, though, Steph, in the group, who is basically the leader of his friend group. And her and her fiancé, Rob, are best friends with my boyfriend since high school. They are also best friends with my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend of five years, Jane. Jimmy, who's the boyfriend, introduced Jane to the friend group, and when they broke up, she never left. It used to bother me, but Jane's always been nice to me. And honestly, Jimmy and her don't really talk at all. So I didn't really care about their past relationship. Also, good for you. I'm very, this is exactly how I am in these situations. Like I messaged one of my ex-boyfriend's new girlfriends recently. And I was like, I think you guys are so cute, but I'm fucking weird. The things that bother me are the following. Last 4th of July, Jimmy and I were still living in the houses we grew up in, and he wanted to have a party at his house, small gathering due to COVID. He decided not to invite Jane because his parents and sister were going to be there, and he didn't want to deal with any awkwardness. Totally fair. This was a problem with Steph, the leader, because in this friend group, we don't leave people out. That's not how we do things. This is what she directly said to me. Anyway, at 4th of July, I made a comment about Jane to my boyfriend. That was meant to be a joke, but Steph didn't take it that way and got mad at me. She didn't tell me, though. She just told Jimmy, and he told me not to say things that we joke about behind closed doors around his friends. Anyway, a month later, I called Steph and apologized for what I said because there had been a lot of tension between us since then, and I just wanted it to stop since she's my boyfriend's friend. She accepted my apology but then said, Jane is never going anywhere. Ever. She's my best friend. And if that ever happens again, it will end mine and Jimmy's friendship. Shut up. (laughs) No, she didn't. It's quite the little threat to make. What a little bitch. (laughs) That moment was when I realized she is not a true friend to my boyfriend. And I've hated this girl ever since. She is known to not be a girl's girl and loves being one of the guys. She talks shit about the girlfriends of the guys in the group. Says a lot of them can do better, and one of Jimmy's friends told me that she said shit like, I don't let Jimmy go out or do fun things, blah, 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 which is far from the truth. Since this happened, I've tried to be the bigger person and change my perspective of her by reaching out to her to make double date plans, which she always says no to, make an effort to talk to her when I see her, and she so obviously just doesn't like me. Sorry for the novel, but to my question, Steph and Rob are getting married next year, and I really don't like her at all. Rob, I'm okay with. He's a good friend to Jimmy, but it doesn't feel right going to the wedding if I don't like the bride. Am I the asshole for not going? Should I go to be petty? Should I accidentally book a trip with my girlfriends that weekend? Help. That's so tough. I I, I would love to know what Jimmy thinks about her comment though, because that it's weird that that would be everything. For me, I would quit putting in any effort into this girl. Yeah, I would just kind of you see her at things, say hi, be nice, but don't go out of your way anymore to like make friends or put in any effort in the relationship. She's clearly like shut the door on you. Mm-hmm. But I also would go to the wedding and it's not to be petty. It's not to cause any drama. Like I would go just one. There's a lot of people that go to weddings and only know one of the people and don't yeah. know or like the other one. Like I think go enjoy the food, the booze, and well, you're spending time with your boyfriend and like supporting him at the end of the day. You're supporting yeah. him support his friends. Yeah. And if you don't go, 
or come up with more like an excuse, I think it's going to give Steph even more reason to be a bitch to you. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's just going to yeah. create a larger gap between yeah. their already non-existent friendship and it's going to be even more awkward when they all are in the same room together. So it's Yeah. I would just I would I would just know her place in your life that she's not someone that you will ever care for, but however as long as you know, the, her husband is going to be friends with Jimmy at this point. If I was Jimmy, I would agree. I wouldn't think that she sounds like a very good friend to Jimmy. So, yeah. because it's like, if she's going to threaten the, her friendship with Jimmy like that, based off of one little incident where, you know, he was trying to make sure that everyone felt comfortable. It's yeah. And it's one thing if it was just his own place, yeah. but it is his parents' house yeah. and you don't know what she, the girlfriend broke up with him. So it's also like if his family was attached and then kind of got mad when they broke up, mm -hmm. it might be an uncomfortable situation for Jane. So it sounds like he was kind of looking out for everyone. Yeah. Um, and she still hangs out. Like it's not yeah. like he says that he will never be in the same room as Jane. And like OP said, it Jane is fine. She doesn't mind Jane. Yeah. So it's it's just kind of this girl really needs to learn her place. And the She's only... She's the leader, though. Yeah. Like, you, I can just picture thing, her type completely. And her being like... Same. She's not a girl's girl. She's like... She wants to yeah. be one of the guys. She, I just picture her being so possessive mm -hmm. over all the guys. Like, yeah. oh, these are my boys. They're my friends. My like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I look out for all my yeah. guys. Oh, it's like that girl from TikTok. The one that always pretends that she's the chill girl. Yeah. And she's like, oh my God, Jason. Oh, is this your girlfriend? She's so pretty. <laughs> oh my God. Jason and me are like siblings. I sleep over all the time. His mom, Patricia, she loves me. Oh my God, Jason, remember that one time when we had that sleepover? We took a bubble bath. That was so funny. <laughs> so funny. Like, it's, she's one of those girls that purposely makes the boys' girlfriends feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Just to show, like. just to yeah. show her place. Yeah. Her place in the group. Yeah. Her power over these guys. And, these are my guys. And honestly, if this was my boyfriend, I would, you know, it's it's hard because you can't tell anyone to, who to be friends with. Yeah, who with. to be friends with. But I would just kind of be like, is is this really someone who you want in our lives? Like she, you know, she's not respecting me. She's also not respecting you. So yeah. I would, I think that I would kind of talk it through with him. But the only reason that I wouldn't is because of the fact that he's marrying, she's marrying one of his other best friends. Yeah. So it now like it's just like, you're in a, you're just, you just kind of have to be like, well, fuck it. Bite the bullet. Yeah. Bite the bullet. Like, I know they sound like a very intertwined friend group. And at yeah. the end of the day, I think the one thing you could do in this situation is, have the boyfriend say something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I don't know when the wedding is or if it's close or whatever, but I don't know if I would do it before the wedding. I think I'd maybe do it no. after down, like down the yeah. road when maybe things kind of elevate and she comes, it's like more disrespectful, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's your place OP to like say anything yeah. um, to her at all. I think it's your boyfriend's place. Like yeah. that's his friend. That's been his friend. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, like it should be him drawing yeah. the boundaries with like between them exactly like at the end of the day it's you can't tell anyone who to be no. friends with or who not to be friends with like obviously if they're you know disrespecting you like then you should communicate with that so them so that they are aware yeah but to tell them that they can't be friends with them that's you know and I know she's not even asking that question she's no. saying if she shouldn't go to the wedding yeah but um it kind of draws but like by doing that it kind of is like it, yeah it's drawing your it's line kind of, in the sand yeah exactly and it's like so true you're like, you're not telling your boyfriend he can't go, but you're also, like, weddings are very coupley. Mm -hmm. They're very, like, coupley things. So it's like, who's he going to spend time with while he's at the wedding? Like, go. The two of you are going to have fun. Like, have a good time. Enjoy the yeah. the bar and the food and yeah. the tunes. Like, yeah. And also, don't make the relationship any more hard for you. Yeah. Because it probably would be with this girl. Yeah. Her colors are showing, so just... Do you sure. let her do her? And if your boyfriend ever goes along with disrespecting you, then that's a problem, but it doesn't sound like he is. So yeah, I would just say, fuck it. Who cares about her? Live your life. Yep. And I don't know, get her a shitty present for the <laughs> wedding and then eat all her food and drink all her wine. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Couldn't be said better. Wait, you didn't want these butt plugs? <laughs> I thought these were on your wedding registry. How <laughs> odd. You didn't want to open them in front of grandma? 
<laughs> Make your boyfriend pay for the gift because you shouldn't spend money on a bitch like that. True. There we go. Okay. Well, nailed that one. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. On to the Reddit stories. Sure you don't want me to go? Yeah, you can read one. Okay, I don't know why, but I think that this one is kind of funny. So, girlfriend, mad I helped my naked friend. Oh, God. Okay. What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking, like, someone just got drunk and started stripping and, like, he had to put her to bed. Mm, Okay. I, 18 male, was hanging out with my friend, 18 female, and her brother, 18 male, also my friend. Her brother left temporarily to get some snacks. Just me and her were home, and she went to take a shower. I heard a crash in the bathroom. I asked if she needs help from outside the door and got no response. I went in, and she was unconscious, but she immediately regained consciousness. I helped her up and gave her a towel. I called her brother to tell him, and he said he would come over and take her to the ER. During that, she was still a bit out of it, so she dropped her towel. When I got off the phone, she became more aware and put her towel back on. We sat on the couch and I brought her ice for her head that she hit. I asked her if she was okay. She said she thinks so. I told her that her brother is coming to take her to the ER. She asked me to bring her some clothes before her brother got there. So I brought her a shirt, pants, a bra, and underwear. She thanked me and I turned around while she put, while she put the clothes on. Her brother got here and before they left, she hugged me saying, thanks so much for helping me. You're a great friend. I'm sorry if it was awkward helping me while I was naked, but I'm glad glad it was you because I can't trust any guy to help me when I'm naked. I told her it's fine. And of course, and that was it. What the hell did you pass out for? That's so scary. Yeah. And so his girlfriend is mad at him for helping her? So... I told my girlfriend that she fainted in the shower. She asked me what happened next, so I I told her I had to help her, and then her brother took her. She asked if I saw her naked, and I said yes. Now she's mad I saw her naked and feels uncomfortable about our friendship. Oh, my God. What do I do to make her feel more comfortable again? You are literally helping someone in a medical emergency. I know. If your girlfriend has a problem with that then your girlfriend needs to work on her own self-confidence and address that insecurity because there's nothing you can do. Like that is 100% the right thing to do in that situation. What are you going to do? Leave this girl pass the fuck out in the shower? Yeah. When you hear hear a loud thump in the shower and then no one responds, when you say, are you okay? What are you supposed to do? Yeah. So that... I mean, that's fucked up. They're all 18. So I mean, my thought, my thought is that the girlfriend probably had a problem with them being friends in the first place. For sure. was probably. And that was now her out to be like, well, you know, now I'm uncomfortable because you've seen her naked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because I don't understand where her other type of logic would be. I remember being in high school and having my high school boyfriend have other girlfriends Mm -hmm. and I was always sketched out by this one girl Mm -hmm. and no, no, no. She's just my friend, blah, blah, blah. Like the typical thing. Yeah. But he did end up when he went like on a camping trip with like the boys, their group of girlfriends came. And so she was there and the two of them shared a bed. What? So that's why we like broke up essentially. So I get where she's coming from, where she's probably like, no, like you, you didn't have to help her. You just want to see her naked. Like you, you guys say you're just friends, but blah, maybe blah, she's blah. jumping to conclusions. Yeah. So I understand that. But at the same time, like, no, like this girl. Yeah. Fucking. What is he out. supposed to do? And based off of his story, it sounds like he was so respectful. Yeah. And, and also some of the comments were saying this too. You don't, when it's a life or death situation like that, you don't look at someone's naked body and think sex Like, you know what I mean? You're not, your brain isn't thinking like that. Like he's just thinking, what the fuck do I do to make sure she's okay? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's any hospital setting too. Like if you get in a car accident and get picked up by an ambulance, like they immediately cut your clothes off to put a gown on you. It's, it's not anything that's, and me in the hospital, I'm, I'm working with patients every day. I'm Mm -hmm. helping them get up and go to the bathroom. Like I'm doing all the day-to-day activities they need to do. So it's like, you never look at someone. It's just, I don't, I just can't even imagine sexualizing it. Like that to me is just so gross, right. but she just probably doesn't understand that. And is probably like thinking he's lying or like, I feel like she had some feelings about their friendship beforehand. And this was her one, her one, you know, 
window to yeah. just be like, you know what? You saw her naked. I'm not comfortable anymore. So because <laughs> otherwise yeah. it really doesn't make sense. Like that is no. another type of another type of insecurity to be mad at your boyfriend for helping someone in a medical emergency, you yeah, know? Literally. <laughs> it's very, it's very insecure. Ugh, I think age kind of speaks to that one. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is that when you're in high school, so many people are, like you said, yeah. friends with the opposite sex. There's just friend groups, all, you know, everyone's hanging out with yeah. everyone. So it's, I have seen one other Reddit post though, that I guess like, I, you know, I'm saying age and I think age has a lot to do with the decisions we make and, you know, the security we have in ourselves and our confidence and everything like that. Like confidence definitely comes with age. Like I was the most insecure. I'm still insecure. What I don't know what I'm talking about, but, <laughs> uh, and we all have body issues or, you know, things about ourselves that we, we might pick on, but, um, every single human has some sort or type of insecurity 100%, in some way, shape or form. 100%. But I saw this other post where this guy was writing in and he's like, am I the asshole for defending a girl in the street? And he basically told this story about how they came out of a club one night and this girl was getting harassed by a guy. So he walks up, pretends to be this girl's boyfriend, and he ends up getting jumped trying to help protect this girl. And his girlfriend was mad at him. And, like, wanted to break up with him over this. Damn. And he was like, I don't know if it's the fact that, like, she says she can't look at me the same since I got jumped and, like, looks at me as, like, being weak. What? But, like, she also said, like, why did I have to be the one to help her? And it was just, like, a goofy situation. So, like, me saying age, like, oh, them being young. Like, I guess, no, because this couple was, you know, late 20s, too. So. Yeah. I'm not sure. I just definitely like not the asshole like I, I don't know how to help yeah the girlfriend I think that just comes with communicating like the fact that this was a medical emergency and this right. is the appropriate way to respond like right would you leave someone in the shower no. potentially concussed and bleeding or who knows what yeah. happened so and his immediate reaction was to grab her a towel right away you know so it's yeah. not even like yeah it, 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 he did all the right things he did. so he really did um yeah. No, but it's funny. This kind of reminds me. I know one time my ex-boyfriend, when he, we were in college, he had two girl roommates mm-hmm. and two guy roommates. So there was a lot of them in, in, in a house. Yeah. And that never fazed me at all. But he told me one time, um, I think it was, it was either when we first started dating or right before, but that his girl roommate was getting hit on. And so she grabbed his arm at the bar and was like, this is my boyfriend. Yeah. And I just remember like, it wasn't a big deal, but I remember I was like, hmm. why, why you, why, why'd she grab you? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, he was probably just the closest. I know, I know. But I was 19. No. So yeah. again, like we've all been there. I mean. Uh, it's and just, I didn't, I never, ever had any issues with them at all. They were really yeah. nice girls. So yeah, it wasn't anything. No, I mean, we all like, we all get jealous and have our, our own insecurities. So yeah, I mean, Justin, my boyfriend always gets hit on at the bar and like guys buy him drinks. And I was, I'm like, <laughs> what the heck, Justin? Like, yeah, where's my attention? But he's just, he gets drinks for us though. It's so great. And we yeah. don't even have to do the talking. He's just, it's so great. Up next, it includes a cat, so you'll like this one. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay an HOA ticket while cat sitting? A friend asked me to watch her cat for her while she was on vacation. When I went over to feed the cat, I parked in the driveway, fed the cat, and left. One day, I went to feed the cat, and there was a $25 ticket on my car for parking in the driveway. It was from the HOA, not the police or parking enforcement. There was nothing illegal about where I parked, nor... Have I ever been told not to park in a driveway by anyone? So I ignored it. The HOA is now pursuing my friend for the ticket since their authority only extends to their members. She sent me, she sent them my info and I flat out told them to take a hike. I'm not paying a fine. And if they don't like it, sue me. She is upset with me and demanding I pay since she will have to pay the fine. If she had told me her HOA does stuff like that and that I need to park on a guest spot instead, I would have but I don't feel obliged to pay a fine for made up rules I was never told about. So am I the asshole? No, absolutely not. You did your friend a favor by feeding and taking care of their cat. 
And also the ticket's $25. Yeah, that's what I was just, I literally looked over your shoulder and I was like, did I hear that right? Because $25. If it was some crazy amount, $250 even. Or like, I was thinking maybe a few grand. Because if it's a few grand, now you're like, oh shit. Uh, now that's a lot of money to, yeah. that's when people start to panic and they start to get, you know, maybe ask for things that they shouldn't. Even a couple hundred can be really burdensome to, I mean, that would be a burdensome to me. Like, I hate wasting money. Yeah, of course. But $25, pay it and move on. What is their deal? Yeah, and, like, I, I, she never mentioned, like, that she got paid to watch the cat. So I guess, like, I would just text the friend and be like, hey, if, if you know, if, they didn't pay you. I could see if it was, fair like, trade off. I could see if it was parked, if they parked in an area that literally had big red signs all over that was like, do not park here a or fire something lane, like that. Yes. A handicap spot. Yes. Yeah. Stuff like that. And then they were like, yo, this is your responsibility. Yeah. Um, but it, they didn't know the fucking rules. So that's, the friend, the friend, it was, was a ticket the from the HOA. So yeah. And the friend should have told them like, Hey, when you go, please park here. Yeah. Like, that's on the friend for fucking up. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, an HOA is a homeowners association. So if you live in like, uh, like a complex, like an apartment complex where you actually own your apartment or like a condo building where you mm -hmm. own your condo, you typically have HOA fees to like maintain the building and do all the maintenance stuff, pay for security, things like that. And so it's H actually such a bitch. <laughs> we, yeah. I have an HOA where I live and it is a group of terrorists. Yeah. I've never heard good things. And also whenever I started looking up randomly, just houses on Zillow, because I thought, Maybe I could start making investments yeah. and la 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 and just for fun. It always gets you at the end. You all, you this see, property does have an HOA. Fee. Yeah, you see everything. You're like, I yeah. got this. I got this. It makes sense. And then you see HOA, and you're like, I'm Fuck out. you. I'm out. <laughs> sometimes they cost as much as the mortgage. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they're sometimes they're actually ridiculous. Some HOAs, like especially in LA, like thousand, yeah. thousand, LA. thousand, couple thousand a Go month. Go next to the ocean. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So no, not the asshole. Uh, your friend should just pay the ticket. Like, this is the most ridiculous thing. Someone in the comments goes, not the asshole. If there's a parking rule that she knew about, it's up to her to tell you. Yeah. Let's hope the friendship doesn't end over $25. <sighs> Which, yeah, like, if you're going to let a friendship... I wouldn't even, like, I don't know if I would have even asked you. I would have been like, I fucked up. I didn't tell you. I don't $25. think I would have even told you. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have, I just wouldn't have asked. Like, you were doing me a favor watching my animal. I probably would have said something just so that you knew for next time if yeah. I, like, you know, if you would do me True. that favor again. True. But, yeah. Yeah, not the asshole. Homeowner definitely knows what her HOA is up to, but too docile or timid to stand up and tell them to fuck off. Yeah, seriously. Maybe this is an opportunity to step up and deal some justice from an oppressive and clearly targeted harassment by their HOA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. HOAs suck ass. Moving along. Cool. I got. Ah. Should I read one back to you? You got another one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it up. It actually plays off kind of well on the other one that I just read. Am I the asshole for getting mad at a friend for changing in front of me? Okay. More I, naked. You got a lot of naked ones. Uh, that's why I said this was a good one to play off of the last one. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 27 male, went over to a friend's house. 26 female because we along with all of our other friends planned on going to a local diner I was really pumped because where I live this place has been closed for a while and it just recently opened up I finished my work stuff early and asked my friend who lives a few blocks away we'll call her Mallory if I could drop by early when I showed up she's still in her home with clothes t-shirts sweatpants that sort of thing we still have an hour left before we head out and she tells me that she needs to finish some homework related stuff so we end up chilling in her room. Now, here's a little background on both of us. She's pretty conventionally attractive, both, but both of our personalities don't match, so nothing ever sparked and we just stayed good friends. With 30 minutes left before we leave, she starts undressing and getting ready right in front of me. This caught me off guard, so I covered my eyes and said, at least ask me to leave the room. She started laughing and brushes <laughs> it off, saying it's not even a big deal and she doesn't see me in that way. I tell her that neither do I, <laughs> she's still fucking topless in parentheses, ah. but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm comfortable seeing her nude. So I leave the room. I kind of leave it at that. And we don't mention it for the rest of the night. We go out and everything seems fine. Then 
she texts me and says that I was kind of being an ass and that I made her feel weird about our friendship. She goes on and to say that if I truly see her as you a friend. You made her feel weird? Yeah. Like, she's the one that fucking just, just got buck naked. Right? She goes on to say that if I truly see her as a friend, then I should be able to not sexualize her body. Does he have a girlfriend? Has he mentioned? No, he doesn't. Okay. I think that he would have because if he did, yeah, that would no, be he, absolutely so not okay. Yeah. Um, this kind of sets me off because w- from where I'm sitting, you can't force this level of comfort with a friend. So I basically tell her that I'm not suddenly going to turn gay for her sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, you're still like, if someone's in front of you, like you have fucking eyes, you can't just like shut them off. Yeah. And that she can ask me to leave the room like a normal person be- before she decides to go full queen of dragons, whatever that means. Khaleesi. Oh. Yeah. Um, God, I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> and I, I love always, Game of Thrones. I always say that I need to watch it and then I never do. So yeah, that's well, where we're at. You got to. And now my phone is blowing up as our mutual friends are calling me an asshole. I get that I snapped at the end and my response could have been more mature. But really, am I the asshole here? No. Because I'm honestly surprised at how many of our friends are taking her side. They're probably just jealous that he didn't fucking sit there and Google her. Like, they're probably like, we would have sat there and saw her naked dude. I think it's the girlfriends, too. The girl, Like, the friends that are girls. I just see this being so weird. Like, say he did get a girlfriend. And this girlfriend comes in the picture and, like, is kind of like, oh, like, you know, you've got a lot of girlfriends. You've never done anything with them, right? Like, just out of curiosity. Like, I mean, technically, he'd be like, well, she got naked in front of me once. Like, you're just making the situation awkward. For no reason. For no reason. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable. Like, I I have a lot of guy friends. That's just, I've always had a lot of guy friends. Like, I have an equal number, like, guy friends, girlfriends, like, decent amount. But I've always had really good guy friends. And I cannot imagine... If they started changing in front of you. Yeah. Or if yeah. I had the... I like, I would never get dressed or yeah. change in front of any of them. It's just a respect thing. Like, mm-hmm. I truthfully, like, we um, we have a couple of girlfriends that, like, will be getting ready to go to the bars and stuff. And they have no problem, like, walking around completely naked until we leave mm-hmm. to go to the bars. And I'm like, is this just me or does anyone else, like, find this kind of goofy? Like, I just, it makes me uncomfortable. Like, I, I, I don't know. So I see this being a very weird situation he's in. Yeah. And like he said, you can't force that level of comfort. If someone says, if I were to get undressed in front of my girlfriend and she said, wait till I leave the room, you know, I would, I would laugh and be like, okay, like, sorry about that. And then we'd move yeah. on. I wouldn't be like, I'm sorry that you sexualized my body. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone has their boundaries. If, yeah, if they don't, if they don't feel comfortable, they don't feel comfortable. Yeah. And I think that that that's fair. So <laughs> totally fair. Everyone has their boundaries, and you need to be just respectful of that. Like, also, not to be like, oh, well, you know, just because they're opposite genders or whatever, like, doesn't mean they can't see each other naked. But it's like, it's just un- it's an uncomfortable situation. Yeah, that's why I said, even if it was one of my girlfriends yeah. who said, like, who was just like, wait till I leave the room, you know, then I would be like, what? You don't want to see my nipples? You know, like, I wouldn't react like this girl yeah. is reacting. I don't care if it's a guy no. or girl. It's just like, if he says he's not comfortable, he's not comfortable. Leave it at that. And that's it at the end of the day. And she's projecting, saying, like, sorry that you can't be around me without sexualizing my body. Like, that's, that's you know. Taking it away that, like. It wasn't even, it didn't need yeah, to go. Yeah, that's, it didn't need to go there. That it was just like there. making this assumption and. Yeah, well, like, why are you assuming? Yeah. Why are you assuming your friend was sexualizing your yeah. body? Maybe he was just, he just said. Taken aback and uncomfortable. Exactly. That's all it was. That's all he said, at least. I mean, who knows? But from what his story is, that's all he said. So. Yeah. Well, and this is really, this is so random, but like me and Justin have always talked about like trying to go to one of the nude beaches here in California because I really, I don't like if I'm going to sit out, like, of course I put sunscreen on. And if you don't, please wear sunscreen. Mm -hmm. But I really don't want to get tan lines, like really bad tan lines on like my top, like my bottoms. I'd still wear bottoms. Yeah. But I'm like, I wouldn't mind going to like just spread eagle out there. (laughs) No, can't do that. But I wouldn't mind like going to a topless beach. So like, 
when you go to a place like that, I understand other people would like see me. Yeah. So I get that, but I'm also like, but you guys are all consenting by going to a new beach. Exactly. And that's yeah. the thing you're consenting. And so it's like to just spring that on one of your guy friends. I mean, if you've never done it before, you could just be like, Hey, like, do you mind if I get changed real quick? Yeah. Like, if not, you could leave, mm-hmm. but to just like, like tits well, out like, and even the even the fact that she did that so what he just said like hey like give me a heads up so i can leave yeah, the room yeah the fact that she drilled in on him is like where the actual issue is yeah because if she just did that and she's like oh like i i just am comfortable i didn't i thought we were all just yeah. you know on that level we've been friends for seven yeah, years yeah if that's how she felt but the fact that she then drilled in on him it almost makes me feel like she has a crush on him and she's so pissed that like he doesn't he have almost, a crush back he almost rejected her in a way like that's that's almost what it seems like but yeah. who knows or honestly she could just be dealing with some you know insecurities some body issues and yeah she didn't you know f- feel like he was supportive of her being naked know. it and sounds maybe like she's she pretty it. comfortable <laughs> I know, but like, I think everyone's comfortable until someone says otherwise. And then you're like, wait, do I have something to worry about? Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it like kind of hammered home for her. Yeah, maybe it hit a a soft spot. Exactly. Um, Any comments? This was the top comment. Not the asshole. If a guy whipped out his junk and then says, hey, it's okay. You know, I'm not attracted to you. It's borderline sexual harassment. Yeah. But because roles are reversed, he shouldn't sexualize her and be comfortable with her. And he should be comfortable with her nudity. Yeah. Someone please explain the difference to me. There is no difference. Yeah. It's no different than like girls, typically girls, getting unsolicited dick pics in their DMs. And it's like no one's asking for that. No one wants to see that. So that is therefore sexual harassment. I actually just saw a, one of these um, really cool body positive TikTokers today was like, I'm collecting all of the unsolicited dick pics and sending them to the police. Mm-hmm. So you're welcome, people. <laughs> and so it's like, that is harassment. And it's like, ugh, it's just an uncomfortable situation to put your friend in. And I just, not the asshole at all. At so all. there's actually a couple of updates, but I don't know if we even really, oh. or do we still want to? Are they good? I I can't remember. So update one. Okay, so the general consensus seems that both parties could have handled the situation better. So I called Mal and apologized for blowing things out of proportion. Her response? Good. (laughs) Bro, what the fuck? Is this even the same person I've been friends with? It's like I'm seeing a totally new side of her. No pun intended. (laughs) She definitely took it way 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 more personal yeah. than she had to and she's she's holding a grudge and he probably he probably picked up on one of her insecurities because prob- otherwise no know. one you wouldn't act like this but fuck it i swallowed my pride and asked if there was anything that she wanted to say to me and apparently she doesn't i tell her as calmly <laughs> <laughs> i tell her as calmly as i can that she's being unreasonable and that i should not have to see her naked and cover my eyes so that she can simply tell me to li- leave the room friends or not i have my boundaries Mallory then fucking doubles down saying that if we're friends and I really don't have a thing for her, it's not that big of a deal and that she doesn't need to apologize for changing in her own room. Why would she even feel the need to bring that up if she wasn't secretly harboring feelings for I him? I know. That's what I'm thinking. If you don't like me and you're it not attracted to me, then you shouldn't have a problem. Just fishing for something. She's fishing. Yeah. Purely fishing. And she's offended because she wanted him to like it. She wanted, I think, like this, almost this like fantasy of like her stripping and him being like, wow, you know what? You're beautiful. I've always had feelings for you. (laughs) And just like take her. Like, I think this is a total fantasy and Mm -hmm. it completely backfired on her. Like, oh my gosh. um, Have you seen How I Met Your Mother? Yeah, of course. So, you know, there's like this thing that they they talk about in a few episodes called The Naked Man. Yeah. And this reminds me of The Naked Man and How I Met Your Mother where the the group of friends and How I Met Your Mother met this guy and Robin like came back with him on a date or something and he was all of a sudden naked on her couch. Mm-hmm. And she hooked up with him. <laughs> and so she like told them the story or told him like whatever, but he's like the naked man, when they leave, you just 
you're come, <laughs> they come back yeah. and you're just naked and it works, you know, 75% of the time like, <laughs> or like whatever it was. But it reminds me of that where it's yeah. like she just got naked and was like expecting this like flip of a switch. Like, mm-hmm. damn, like, what, yeah. are you, what are you doing? Yeah. But I like it. And she didn't get that. If we're only friends, it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, she's definitely heard about this and... She's, uh, she's got some other feelings happening. She's crushing on you. She's crushing. She's crushing hard. So I don't really know what advice is about that. Because if he's not crushing back, then no. what do you do? And he, like like you said, like these are my boundaries. Yeah. And if she's not willing to like a- abide by them and like respect your boundaries, then you can't go to her house alone and like go into her room. And I, I don't know, like keep it in a neutral zone maybe. Yeah. But you just kind of have to evaluate, like, if you want a friend that doesn't respect you. Yeah. Or just limit your interactions. Yeah. Because if, if she's really crushing on him that hard, then she's going to have to yeah, be a little bitter for a minute. I think that's what happens. If someone has a crush on someone and it's not reciprocated, then, like, they're, they are they got to be bitter for a little bit before they can move on and be friends again. Yeah. No, what you say? She's going to have to work through her feelings. Yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, like, do you even want to be friends with someone then who acts like that? No. And again, you don't have to be bitter, but I'm just saying, I feel like it's, she probably is just because of her own ego is just kind of like, well, fuck you then. And once she gets yeah. over that, then for sure, she'll probably be fine. Oh, <laughs> Mallory. How- oh, Mal. Mal gal. <laughs> okay. On to the next. Am I the asshole for refusing to attend my best friend's unassisted home birth? Would you want to come to my house and watch me pop out a kid in my tub I mean I would still go but like I would stay on the other side of you (laughs) otherwise I might faint you don't want to be in the shoot in the alley getting ready I don't know I I honestly feel like I could be one of those people who faints because I'm fucked Justin's scared of blood yeah I'm uh, my poor mother she's gonna have to deal with my screaming well especially yeah because of the fact that you'd be in so much pain then it's like if you weren't in any pain and you were just loving life, then I think that it might not make me queasy. But because you're screaming and I, I feel like it'd be so much for me. <laughs> well, and I'm this, scared for my own birth. Like, yeah. Everyone knows how traumatized I am by the thought of childbirth. So. Yeah. But this friend, unassisted home birth. Yeah, that's what scares me too. I feel yeah. like I'd be liable. Let's get into this. My best friend is 27 weeks pregnant and has incredibly limited prenatal care. According to them, missing things like a 20-week anatomy scan, almost all ultrasounds, and a glucose test is because it's too difficult to find health care while non-binary. I'm sure it isn't the easiest, but I sort of feel like if you've committed to parenting, you've signed yourself up for having regular health care during your pregnancy, even if it's difficult or slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. Prenatal care is like one of the most important things you can do once you find out you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you are short on certain vitamins or don't get enough folic acid, it can totally change the development of your child. So making sure everything is okay is so important. I get trying to find a healthcare provider when you're non-binary must be so difficult because finding one as a cisgendered person, like it's incredibly hard still so like I can't even imagine then that extra complexity but like you can still try multiple doctors like you don't have to just find one and if they suck like stay with them like doctor shop people like if you don't find a doctor you like go to the next one for context they're white with private health insurance recently I found out that it's been difficult to find health care because no one will take them on as a patient since they want an unassisted home birth Mm. with no midwife nothing after basically no midwife or doctor for most of their pregnancy as well. Early on in their pregnancy, they asked me to support them during the labor and birth. Now that I know their plan is to skip prenatal care during their pregnancy and during their birth, I don't feel comfortable putting myself in that situation, especially because I might have to make a major decision if the situation goes south or be unable to. My friend is incredibly hurt. I am refusing to attend their unassisted home birth. They don't feel like I'm being supportive of their birthing decisions and that I've totally let them down at an important time in their life. Am I being the asshole for skipping out on the birth? 
No. No. No, not I, at all. Yeah. I I understand that if they're very close friends, she wants to have her best friend there to support her. I understand how that hurts because in her mind, this is exactly how she wants things to be done. And so yeah. she just feels like her best friend should be supportive because it's a huge major life event in her life. Um, however, it is scary. There's, like she said, what if something went wrong? It's just, what do you do? I mean, it's, that's a lot of pressure, a lot of liability that nobody wants to take on because they're going to, if anything happens, they're never going to, they're not going to, that it's guilt, like they're death. never, yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to like find something to compare it to, but I'm like, there's like no other medical scenario that you even do at home. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, come to my unassisted kidney transplant. Oh, yeah. come to me passing ginormous kidney stones. Yeah. Unassisted with no meds. Like there's just no medical situations that you do unassisted at home. It's so yeah. irresponsible. And like childbirth is so true. life or death for a lot of people. And there's a lot of, you know, variables and a lot of things that can go wrong in a split second. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I get wanting to have a home birth. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I think tub births are really, really cool. Like mm-hmm. there's some research coming out that water births actually prevent or like decrease the risk of tearing Mm -hmm. because it like allows your skin to be soft, supple, and like more stretchy. Wow. So I think there's a lot of cool research behind like using a doula and a midwife and, you know, birthing in the comfort of- What is a midwife? um, Like a birthing coach that has special training. Oh, got it. Yeah. Um, Some of them are even nurses. So they can Mm -hmm. be an RN that goes on to then become- a certified midwife or a doula and yeah so they're they're birthing professionals that you know have training for it so yeah I think that's really cool but then to do it in your home alone completely unassisted right that's why like if you asked me to come I would be there for you but I just wouldn't be the one that's in there <laughs> you know what I mean like and I feel like that's basically what they're asking her right I don't know. I mean, I guess, like, is their partner going to be the one Who else is going to be helping? I don't know. That's a terrifying thought. That's because a really, really if I see, scary thought. If I see my friend crying, screaming, there's blood everywhere, there's a, another human life, I'm going to, like, freak the fuck out. I'm not going to know what to do, and I'm not going to be helpful. Yeah, you'd pass out. I, I personally, like, blood and all this shit doesn't bother me. But I think it I doesn't still wouldn't it would, want the liability. I think that it blood doesn't bother me. It does blo- bother me, but yeah, you're right. Okay, I guess it bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think but I think it's the coupled with screaming too. You know, yeah. that that would the combination would be really It's not an ideal situation. Yeah. Um there's a lot of good comments on this one. Not the asshole. I mean to be frank, you aren't supporting their birth decision, but their birth decision is insanely irresponsible and shouldn't be supported. Next comment. Exactly. At least 10 to 40% of home births require transfers to hospitals due to medical complication. This varies depending on location, birthing programs, etc., which is why home births are planned, carefully monitored, and attended by medical professionals, usually a qualified midwife. And to be clear, this is a planned home birth we're talking about, where re- women receive competent medical care. Home birthing is a great option and is not risky if you have proper medical clearance, care, and supervision during the birth, and a sound plan. A competent home birth midwife will constantly screen for possible common issues like infection, cord entanglement, fetal distress, obstructed labor, etc. Free birthing, on the other hand, is dangerous and absolutely stupid. And it is much more risky than an ordinary home birth. It's not natural. It's not empowering. It's just reckless. Studies into free birthing have found parents doing this rarely make the call to transfer to the hospital in time when issues arise. It's a danger to both mother and child and triples the rate of stillbirth. Just to reinforce this, a 2010 meta-analysis, which a meta-analysis is taking a bunch of like top tier studies and compiling them into one like summary and that found baby's risk of dying during free births increases by 300 percent wow so yeah like honestly this is the most irresponsible thing in the world then and i am gonna 
just look at their source here because they linked it. Yeah, the source they linked was published in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So that's one of the most legit sources in the country as far as OBG and maternal health related stuff can go. So great source. Love this fucking comment. I love educated comments like this. And not the asshole. This friend is honestly, I think this friend is kind of the asshole to put the baby's life at risk and be a completely irresponsible parent. I would just say that OP needs to have these conversations with her. Yeah, I know. And let her know. It sounds she might just kind of be turning a blind eye. Is that the phrase? Yeah, I I guess I just could be just uneducated and not really knowing, you know, what. The risks involved. Yeah. She doesn't give an update. I looked at her page just now, and there's no update um, about addressing the friend or really anything that's going on in this situation. So hopefully the friend gets it together because that's terrible and so scary. It's just there's so much that can go wrong. So much. So, no, not the asshole. Okay, so this one's a little interesting. This one gives me very uncomfy vibes. Because I, it's another story kind of about friendship, but you'll see what I mean. But like, if my friend was doing this, like, or if I was supporting my friend doing this, it would be really fucked up. So I think my sister-in-law's 23 female best friend is trying to get with my 25 female husband, 28 male, and she's encouraging it. Am I delusional? That the sister-in-law is encouraging it? Yes. Got it. Yes. Yes. My sister-in-law, 23 female, is my husband's half-sister. She was the product of their mother's infidelity. His father divorced their mother when he was 12 after he found out through a paternity test she wasn't his. Damn. My father-in-law refused to have anything to do with my sister-in-law but continued to have a relationship with my husband. Because of this, my sister-in-law is very clingy to my husband. My husband is also very protective of his sister and generally doesn't tolerate anything negative being said about her which is why I'm posting this here before mention it, mentioning it to him. My husband and I bought a house last year, which has its own indoor swimming pool. My sister-in-law was super excited when she saw it and asked if she could use it sometimes with her friend. We said it was fine as long as she gave us a notice before she turned up. Her and her friend Chloe have used it many times before, but almost never when my husband is home. He is a lawyer and works long hours. With lockdown, my husband has started to work from home. My sister-in-law asked me if she and Chloe could come over and use the pool. I told her I was uncomfortable with them coming over as I'm pregnant and don't want to accidentally expose the baby to anything risky. My sister-in-law then asked if she and Chloe quarantined for two weeks, would they be able to come over? My husband said it was fine. Two weeks later, they turn up to my house. My husband was in his office, so they go straight to the pool after making small talk. My husband ends up coming out after an hour and we're hanging out in the kitchen. My sister-in-law walks in to get a drink and she starts talking to my husband. Before she goes back to the pool, she says, Chloe's going to be so happy to see you. It was weird because my husband and Chloe aren't close. Chloe comes into the kitchen two minutes later and spends the rest of her time talking to my husband until he excuses himself to get back to work. She's super giggly and smiley when she talks to him. He would say something sarcastic and she would laugh like it was the funniest joke she's ever heard. It honestly felt like she was flirting with him. Before she went back to the pool, she gave me this weird, smirky look. Before they leave, they ask my husband if he's working from home every day of the week. He confirms he is. The next two weeks, they come over to the house to swim every single day, except Chloe never gets in the water. Instead, she hangs around the house in her bikini. She was previously wearing a one-piece, if that makes a difference, every single day. Whenever my husband comes out to hang around me, she quickly interrupts him and keeps him talking until he has to go back to work. I made lunch for us all, and when I excused myself to call my husband down, my sister-in-law quickly stopped me and said Chloe could call him for me. They shared a look, and Chloe looked really happy when she went to get him. Chloe also started to get touchier with my husband. She put her hands on his chest and arms, stands or sits really close to him, To my husband's credit, he does usually create space between them whenever she does something like this. 
The reason I believe my sister-in-law is in on this is because she's made a few pregnancy-related jabs at me recently. She told me a story about how one of her friends, boyfriends, was cheating on her, and then something along the lines of, quote, did you know a lot of men start cheating when their wives are pregnant? She's also made comments about how I look chubby now, and it looks weird next to my husband because he's well-built. If she spots my husband out of the office, she quickly goes to inform Chloe. I know pregnancy hormones can mess with a person's brain, so I'm wondering if I'm just looking for something that isn't there. My sister-in-law sent me a text yesterday asking if they could come over to swim next week, and I really want to say no, but I know she'll whine to my husband if I do. I ideally want to have a conversation with him before then, but I'm not sure if I should mention the flirting. Am I being delusional? Uh, <laughs> no, girl. It's right in front of you. What the fuck? You're spot on. What the fuck? Ah, this is so uncomfy. You see what I mean? Like if your friend was doing this, but like you're encouraging it. I'm so upset. <laughs> you're encouraging it. So how old are they again? Remind me. So the two girls, the mm -hmm. sister-in-law and the friend are 23. And how old is the wife? The wife is 25 and the husband is 28. Got it. So they're all like not big, age. not big age gaps and like. 23 they're kind of on the same you know playing field so I'm sure her friend is like especially the sister-in-law the friend and the wife are only two years apart so the sister-in-law is probably like this could be you this could be your house and your pool you should get in there tap that tap my this brother's ass this is so messed up I mean even even if nothing else, for her to make a comment, did you know that most men cheat when their wives are pregnant? That's enough. You know what I mean? Like so that, weird. It. Who says that to a pregnant woman? What? That is evil. Evil. Why? Evil. I don't care if the statistic is true or wherever you got your information. You don't fucking say that to a hormonal pregnant wife you bitch <laughs> like well, i i don't understand what you were trying to get accomplished besides the only thing you could be trying to do at that push doubt in her mind make her insecure exactly make her think she has reason yeah to fear something yeah or suspect something yeah it's really kind of unhinged yeah and i'm sure the sister just because of like the dynamic with the dad it sounds like that's a really complicated and like traumatic upbringing mm -hmm. to have like, you know, your your older brother have a dad that like w like was supposed to be your dad, but your mom cheated and doesn't, so he doesn't acknowledge you, ignores you, whatever. Um, you know, you're the reason for their divorce. Like I'm sure that is such a traumatic yeah. upbringing. And so the fact that, you know, she really clings to the brother, I'm sure she sees his wife and this, you know, new baby as yeah. a threat to her. Yeah. So I'm sure that's kind of where this is coming from, but it's also like, well, what happens if your friend actually did get in there? Then your friend would be with your brother, but she's best friends with her. So it's those two against the world is probably what her mind is. I know. I feel thinking. like it's, it's kind of like a means to an end. Like, I think she's just like, just get in there and break them up. I don't know. I, I don't know, but there's nothing. I guess. Okay, what's the update? There's an update. Well, I read and reread all of the comments on the original post to try and figure out how I was going to bring up the issue. Turns out I didn't have to. We were watching a movie and my phone lit up with another text from my sister-in-law telling me she was now going to be here at 1 p.m. the next day to swim with Chloe. My husband saw it and told me to tell her not to come. This is really weird behavior for my husband because he tends to do anything to accommodate my sister-in-law. Hell yeah! Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> and very rarely refuses her anything. I asked him if something had happened and he shrugged it off and we kept watching the movie. A few minutes later, he paused the movie and said he wanted to ask me a question. He asked if I'd noticed Chloe never swam when she came to our house. I wish I could say I was calm and collected like the comments were advising, but... I ended up laughing hysterically. I was honestly just so relieved he'd brought it up instead of me having to be the one to do it. I think my so husband. True. Yeah, it's so uncomfortable, especially because that's his family. Yeah. He's protective. Like, yeah. you don't want to 
give him reason to be like mad at you. But you hear so many stories where the husband or the wife or whoever just, it seems like they're so oblivious to what's going on. They're like, yes. no, 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 no. You're just, you're, that's, you're making that up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's in your head. So uh, this is so satisfying that he's the one to be like, you know what? She made me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> so refreshing. So refreshing. So nice. I think my husband thought I was losing my mind when I finally stopped <laughs> laughing. <laughs> yeah. Probably just like, what the fuck is happening here? Uh -huh. When I finally stopped laughing, he repeated the question and said he wanted a serious answer. I said, of course I've noticed. And he awkwardly replied, so you must have noticed the other thing too. To summarize the conversation that followed, my husband hadn't noticed Chloe was flirting with him the first few days because he was so busy with work. He wasn't really paying attention to anything else. He said when she started getting handsy is when he suddenly had the light bulb moment that she was into him. He says he didn't want to unnecessarily stress me out, so he never mentioned anything. But he was worried I noticed too and thought he was interested because he hadn't immediately shut it down. He realized we would eventually have to have this talk, but he wasn't sure how to bring it up. Oh, the irony. Mm -hmm. He did privately speak to Chloe and told her he was happily married and wasn't interested in starting anything with anyone else. Apparently, she never took him seriously because she kept doing it. Chloe is going to get banned from the house. Wait, so he said this to Chloe before this conversation happened? Yeah, and she still kept what doing it. What a little fucking bitch. The balls this girl has. I Because the audacity. I, I just can't even imagine how... For me, if I'm ever around a couple, I make sure to make the female feel very included and very comfortable. I acknowledge the female more. Yes, so I don't understand how... You have the nerve to do this in someone else's house around their pregnant wife. You, in their home. That is some type of crazy bitch. In their that home. That is insane to in me. In front of her. Can you imagine? And then the fact that he said something to her and she still continues. What a bitch. What's, how delusional is she? She's very, very confused. Fuck her. <laughs> She's a little unhinged. Oh my God. Uh, I'm heated. In the end, he called his sister on Sunday to tell her either she got her to stop or Chloe couldn't come over anymore. His sister ended up having a tantrum and said a few nasty things about me, the baby, and our relationship. Wow. I, I'm dumbfounded. Is she in She's, I think you're right. I think it's just a insecurity because of yeah. her own upbringing. Yeah. She insisted I was somehow behind his request and made some comments about how I was controlling and insecure because I looked like a beached whale and Chloe was younger and hotter. Fucking. <laughs> he was pretty pissed at this and said if she said something like that about me again, he would stop talking to her. Yeah. Good. I love this. Setting, me too. setting boundaries. Yeah. I absolutely love this. This is what a supportive partner looks like. Yeah. This is great. She claimed I had baby trapped him. And when my husband pointed out we were already married, so I didn't need to trap him and that he was the one who wanted to start a family, she kept insisting I had manipulated him into feeling that way. She claimed he was unhappy in our relationship and he always looked tired because I was forcing him to slave away to fund my fancy lifestyle while I sat on my ass all day. He pointed out he chose to be a lawyer knowing he would have to work long hours, and I had only recently left my job, so her accusations were baseless. She said some other stuff along the lines, but the thing that made my husband finally snap was when she said, it, the baby, was already ruining everything, and it was just going to get worse when it was born, and he should have dragged me to the abortion clinic while he had the chance. What type of psycho bitch is this girl? Oh my God. Wow. He told her neither her nor Chloe were welcome in our home anymore until they've apologized for how they've been behaving and for the things my sister-in-law said. No, Chloe is never allowed back in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> no chance in hell. Chloe would receive a lifetime ban. Absolutely. I, I think the fact that he already confronted her and she continued to cross boundaries and t try to touch him and try to seduce him done unreal the sister family you, you don't have to deal with family honestly after what she's saying though i would be 
I would be livid. I would say you are not my family anymore because you do not treat me, my my future baby, my wife, the way that you have. No. You know, I mean, unless you go and get serious help because you need it, yeah. you are not allowed back in my life. Yeah. I don't care if you're blood. I, you do not treat people you love the way that she's treating him and the words that she's saying. Even if he was in a toxic relationship, let's say that OP somehow is just a huge fucking raging bitch. Yeah. You still do not do the things that she did. No. This that is, is not how you go about it. That is not how you treat people. That's not how you talk about people when when that's his future. That's, that's his, his family. That's his family. That's his yeah. son. That's, you know, that's not how you... It. Yeah. Ugh. It's really messed up. I think uh, clearly this is like a wanted pregnancy and they're very excited and all this stuff and to call her a beached whale okay that's pretty bad she's fucking pregnant mm -hmm. the average like weight gain for a pregnant woman is i think like 30 pounds that's the average weight gain mm -hmm. so of course she's fucking baking a baby inside of her you're gonna yeah. gain weight and not look like yourself so really fucking rude but then to say like you should have dragged her to the abortion clinic that's 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 exactly where i completely drew the line on everything no one should ever be dragged to an abortion clinic. Yeah. Like an abortion should be their choice. But like this is that's so beside the point. Like this is planned, happy. Like what the fuck? Yeah. No, but you're right. It's like even if she considered it, even if he considered it, that's not his place to drag a woman to an abortion clinic. No. And that is never anyone's place to make a comment like that. It's it's actually kind of scary. But it is scary. Where, but that's where her mind went. That's what I'm. That's why I'm freaking out right now because I'm like, this is not just someone being a bitch. This is scary. She Speaking, really. You brought up Gone Girl. Yeah. I'm like, this sounds like some Gone Girl type of mentality. Well, it almost She's does. She's plotting. That's it. That's like if you're already saying like, I get the baby's not here yet, so you you know you haven't had a chance to form a connection, and she's she's feeling threatened and insecure, and so she's like, just get rid of it. But would you then trust her around your baby once it's born? Because you can already tell she resents the child yeah. so much before even meeting it. Right. I wouldn't trust her to babysit. And his family. She resents the wife. His family. Yeah. That's exactly what they are. And that probably yeah. is stemming from some type of insecurity, which is really sad. However, she still needs to get help because that is so insanely unacceptable. It's bad. And I feel so bad for OP because what I do know. you do? You know that your husband still, you know, loves his little sister. Yeah. But like, I would never want her near me or my baby or my husband or my house because that, what, how she it's terrible acted. terrible what she did. Yeah. It's not it's like terrible. it was even just a moment of her bitching and saying really mean words because that Sure, she could take back. She could say, you know, I was just having a freak out moment. Yeah. But the fact that she was plotting that entire time, that... She was deceiving. She was coming over with a plot mm -hmm. and trying to wiggle her way and yeah. her friend in. Yeah. And that's what's too far. That's where I would be like, I don't want you in my life at all. So yeah. I feel so bad for her because obviously the sister's most likely going to continue to stay in their lives. Yeah. Hopefully the sister just gets help though because that would be the best case scenario. There's a little bit more of the update, so let's see what they say. He said he wasn't sure he could ever forgive or forget what she'd said about her child, even if she did apologize, and he couldn't believe she would even think something like that, let alone yeah. say it. Yeah. Apparently, she started crying and said she was sorry, that she didn't mean it, and she was just scared to lose him, mm, and that she wasn't thinking clearly. He hung up on her. He showed me his phone, and she's been calling him and texting him since begging him to reply. He asked if she'd said anything to me. I was debating whether to say anything or not, but he kept insisting he knew she had said something, and he wanted to know what it was. I told him the things I mentioned in the original post and a few other things she had said. He asked me why I never mentioned anything when she first said it, and I mentioned how he got really defensive whenever I said anything even slightly negative about his sister, and he got defensive. I pointed out he was doing it again, and after some back and forth, he admitted that, quote, maybe he was a little bit defensive when it came to her but he promised to stop and he wanted to make sure we could talk about anything, including his sister. He ended up mentioning wanting to try couples counseling. He said it wasn't because he thought there was something wrong with our relationship, but apparently he had been speaking to his dad a lot recently. And he mentioned one thing he regretted about his marriage with mother-in-law is that they never went to therapy until the cracks in their relationship were too big. 
And his Good current, for him. I love it. I love him. In his current marriage, they go, and it's helped him avoid the mistakes of his first marriage. I agreed. So we're probably going to try that. OP, is your husband single? <laughs> Does he have a brother? <laughs> Just kidding. I always um, love those comments on TikTok. On TikTok. Yeah. Is, your, is your husband single? Is your boyfriend yeah. single? <laughs> yeah, I, I love couples counseling. That's something... Um, like Justin and I, I like really want to go to just as like a maintenance. Like you, you, it's before cracks, like they said, before any cracks get bigger. And it's just like solidify your communication because I think defensiveness is something that it is really easy to get defensive Mm because like you don't want to feel attacked. You want to not feel like a bad person or like, you know, whatever the reason is. But, um, it's one of those four horsemen of the apocalypse that, you know, the book that we're reading talks about John Gottman what makes love last. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I really, really, really love this take on couples therapy. And yeah, me too. Again, here I am plug in therapy. Yeah. He, and he sounds, he sounds pretty awesome. I'm really, I'm really liking the end of the story. Yeah. Um, Just final tidbit. My husband thinks my sister-in-law will eventually turn up even if we tell her not to, but he promised he'd deal with her if she does. So Reddit, I guess you were right. I really just need to, did need to speak with him. Thanks for the advice and the comments. I enjoyed reading them all. Oh, happy ending. I know, such a good update. Yeah, well, hopefully the sister gets help, though, because that, I mean, it does make me feel really happy that she did switch and apologize and say she wasn't thinking clearly because... I mean, it came out in the end. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really glad that she said all that because if she stood by that, then I would be so concerned. Um, but I think it really was just being so afraid of losing him, which is ironic because it's what pushes people away. <laughs> like, don't treat people like that when you're afraid of losing them. Mm-hmm. Why, why treat them like ass when you're afraid of losing them? Yeah. It makes no sense. You're, like, you're going to be the reason you do lose yeah. them in that, in that case. The logic is flawed. But anyway. I'm so happy this one turned out good. Me too. Sorry, sister-in-law, for calling you a bitch so many times. I was also not in my right mind because I was upset. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) If the shoe fits. Yeah. I'll save the happy one for the end. Yay. (laughs) Okay. Would I be the asshole if I deleted my friend's engagement pictures? Don't look. Sorry. You little cheater. I didn't look. I'm going to get one of those privacy I, I was looking at the caption. I was reading as you spoke. I don't trust you. <laughs> I tried to be short. Sorry. English is my second language. I got married last fall. Where I live, fall means the trees are changing colors. So the wedding pictures are to die for. We didn't have a huge budget. So a friend of mine asked her friend if she could do it for me. I had seen some of her work and she is really talented. Plus, she's a total sweetheart. The only thing is... For what she charges, and since it's more of a hobby, you'll get your pictures when you get them. Well, I got them, and now I need to know if what I'm about to do falls in asshole territory. A few days after my wedding, my friend announced to me that she was engaged. I was ecstatic and wanted to know everything. Turns out, she got engaged at my wedding. My brain gets out of its vegetative state, and I remember her table being way too excited at some point but I blamed the alcohol. I wasn't thrilled about it, realizing then that she had basically not only gotten engaged at my wedding, but instead of hiding it and announcing it later, she announced it to our friends during the party. It was a tough pill to swallow, but I figured, whatever, it's not like I even realized what was happening. We did have a discussion about it, and she didn't seem to understand why I was upset until I put it into perspective for her, asking her how she would feel if I made a big announcement at her wedding, taking the attention away from her big moment. In my friend's mind, it's no longer the day I got married. It's now also the day she got engaged. (laughs) On my dime. We eventually turned the page, and I thought it was over. Well, I've sort of been friends with my photographer since the wedding because of common interests. At some point, she point blank told me that now that we are closer, she feels comfortable asking me what to do with my friend's pictures because it makes her really uncomfortable. During the evening, the wedding party took a break to do a change. And during the time, my photographer was taking pictures of foliage and the venue. My friend apparently asked her to take pictures of her and her boyfriend. She didn't really see a problem since we weren't back yet and they were guests. That's until she realized They were engagement pictures. Some poses just don't leave place to interpret. So when she asked me what to do, 
that, you know, accidents happen, I told her to just put them in a separate folder. Ever since, I've been thinking, what am I going to do with that folder? My friend has been asking about my wedding pictures periodically, but hasn't asked about her pictures specifically. It was easy when I didn't have them, but now I do. I've had them since April, and I know she will eventually come out of hiding now that COVID restrictions are loosened. I want to delete the folder since they are my property anyways, but I don't want to be a major asshole either. Before you say it, I do realize I haven't forgiven her at all like I initially thought. And I wouldn't either. Um, I, You know, I never really understood all of the etiquette of weddings at a younger age but as don't I don't wear white yeah as I don't got, propose at someone's <laughs> as wedding as I got older I I found out that that is definitely a rude yeah <laughs> it's so fucking rude but here's the thing I would throw a fit okay. I would be so mad but here's the thing the issue is between the friend the the other I'm a, these are two women right yes the issue is between the two girlfriends so I'm assuming Possibly, I guess I don't know, but I'm assuming if it's traditional, like mm -hmm. that it was the male who asked for her hand in marriage. Yeah. And what the fuck is she supposed to do? You know what I yeah. mean? It's like at that point, you just kind of have to be like, well, fuck it. She was so over the moon. Unless she plotted this, unless they were like, we're going to piggyback, yeah. <laughs> piggyback off of their uh, photos and get some free photos. That's where I draw the line. Because even if you had no idea your boyfriend was going to propose... You can keep it quiet. You can recognize my boyfriend had the worst proposal that he possibly could have had because I think fucking doing it anywhere else would have been better. Like, yeah. I think that's so tacky unless it's like something that the bride wants. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like some people are okay with it. I'm not one of those people clearly, but some people do like to get engaged. Like they find it almost heartwarming that their best friend got engaged at their wedding too. Yeah. Like, so some people are into it. I am not. But I think if this was her friend and she wanted to have her, you know, her friend have a great wedding, a great magical day, one, you keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. And two, you don't go out of your way to track down the photographer to take engagement pictures for you. Mm -hmm. You're not paying for that photographer. Yeah. That photographer is not there for your fucking needs. But here's the thing is if it already didn't register in her brain that it was a red flag, then she's like, yeah. oh, the photographer is right here. Let's take pictures. Yeah. You know, so it if she would have realized that that wasn't okay from the start, then she probably wouldn't have. She's a little clueless. Yeah, it sounds like she's a little clueless. The fact, though, that she's being sly about the pictures, though, she knows what she did now. Yeah. Otherwise, she would just ask and be like, hey, you know, I fucked up. And I did something even worse, and I actually had the photographer take some pictures of me. But I don't think she thinks it's fucked up. I think she's probably just feeling— Then why isn't she just coming out right and asking? Because she's probably a little bit nervous. But why? Because she doesn't know if she fucked up or not. <laughs> so if you have to question it, though. Yeah. If you're questioning it. And you're being sneaky well, about Well, because she already it. knows it's a touchy subject, so she's like, I would love to see those pictures— but just come out and say it. Yeah. You already fucked up. True. You know your friend knows you fucked up because she's got the pictures. Yeah. She's going to see it. Yeah, true. So just own it. You true. already fucked up. Own your mistake. That's going to play out better than okay, being a so, little sneaky coward. <laughs> I don't know why this story is so funny to me. But so what would you end up doing? Would you delete the pictures? No. So there is a comment on one of them that I absolutely love. And that is what I would do. I think in the heat of the moment, I might be like one click, one click, but I also, I think this is better revenge. Oh, so I'll, I'll read the comment. Let's hear it. Oh, wow. Not the asshole. You would be well within your rights to delete the photos. Announcing an engagement at someone's wedding is awful, but I would have been okay to let it go. Like you, she might not have known a proposal was coming and they didn't announce it to the room at large. Your initial response to her was good, but the photographer thing is absolutely unacceptable. I think I'd keep her hanging. Let her see the photos you've chosen of your special day. Never mention hers. Mm. If she asks, you can then make her explain why she got your photographer, whose time you had paid for and allocated to take pictures that weren't about your day. You can choose whether to delete the photos or charge her for them, but hopefully she will be sufficiently embarrassed. It will make her think, 
If not, I'm not certain I'd actually want her as a friend. And the next person goes, charge her for the photos. It was tacky to get engaged at a wedding, but extra shifty to ask for the photos on your dime. And that's what I would do. Yeah, that's um, a good that's a good one. Fuck it. If you get your wedding photos cheaper, and it was shitty, but it was at a time your photographer wasn't taking pictures for you directly, still fucking shitty and shouldn't be done. But hey, charge that bitch. And then basically you got your photos even more discounted. Yeah. I'm all for bargains. Yeah. I'm a thrifty, you are. thrifty bitch. You are. So more Char- or uh, all I, Alejandro just told me that you bought a couple of purchases today to revamp them and resell them. <laughs> yeah, we put them on Justin's credit card. <laughs> if anyone's in the market for a beautiful Gucci purse, I have one or two. But I'm trying to sell the one so then I can not feel so guilty about keeping the second. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're keeping one. I didn't know that. Potentially. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Keeping keeping the purchase on Justin's credit card or? No. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to him. Um, he thought about it though. He's like, I almost didn't show you because I was going to try to like sneakily buy it for like a big present. And I'm like, Aww. you should have. <laughs> but no. Um, yeah. So I charged this bitch for her photos. Yeah. I think that's a great solution. Yeah. It's a great one. Mm-hmm. Cause it, at the end of the day, she already did both things. She got engaged and she took the photos. And so, yes, if you just were to delete them, it feels almost, it, it, feels a little petty yeah well then you have to lie too like yeah i never got them and then that's on your conscience or you just have to straight up be like yeah i deleted them come at me bro (laughs) yeah so i kind of like that pettiness that's just like a very sophisticated more of a logical way of being petty where it's like you know what it was my photographer on my dime. If yep. you want the photos of your engagement you can pay. that you had on my wedding day, which I found very disrespectful, pay up. Pay up. Cough it up, Cough motherfucker. It up. Cough yeah, up. I completely agree. I think that's the best response. Someone else goes... I do feel bad, though, that it was it most likely wasn't her choice to get proposed in that moment. But no boy would ever think, oh, let's go find the wedding photographer and make her take pictures of us too. Yeah, true. That was on her. She was definitely culprit as well. That was on her. You're right. So yeah, you guys talk about proposal plans with your boyfriends. If you guys feel that you're getting engaged, like some people truly don't care. Maybe this is just me being a weird type A weirdo, but like just make sure your boyfriend knows not to propose at someone else's wedding. Yeah. I think that's the one rule. Like just sweetie, Make sure you don't propose at someone else's wedding or on a holiday or my birthday or in an important event that is celebrating me. Like I saw a couple of people that got engaged at their graduation and in the comments, people were like, seriously, bro, you couldn't let her have her fucking special day and propose tomorrow. Cause it's like, that's her graduation. She just worked her ass off for that degree and you're kind of stealing the thunder, even though a proposal is also about her too. Yeah. I was going to say, but a graduation is so special and you worked so hard. Just let her have her day. Propose tomorrow. But all of her family would be there that day. I don't want my family to see me get proposed to. They can have a party secretly after, waiting. Mm. I'll go celebrate after, but I want it to be like very intimate. Yeah. And just like a secret photographer hiding in the bushes, but yeah. very intimate. Same here. Yeah. I feel I would be way too uncomfortable. You don't want an audience for your proposal. <laughs> You just want it intimate and nice and, you know, about you as a couple and just very special. So don't do it like this guy did. So last, last little story. And then bedtime. Yes. I'm the breadwinner and my husband is a house spouse. And everyone we know, including our friends, all have a problem with that. Why? Hmm. When I got a job in a low cost of living area where his job prospects were abysmal, he said he wanted to try his hand at being productive around the house and see if he could come up with ways to save and make money from home. He's knocking it out of the park. He grows fruit and vegetables in a huge garden, has some fruit and nut trees going, learned how to can, makes all of our food from scratch, does a great job with the housework keeps bees as a hobby so we can get out of the house and go to the local beekeeping association meetings, has made us lots of interesting friends who keep bees, home brews all of our beer, 
And last week, he learned how to make soap. This is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> this is my dream. Yeah. I literally want to have bees someday. I think it's so amazing. The only thing is I'd want, I'd want to do all of this with my husband. Yeah, which it sounds like she's like, I mean, she said make us lots of interesting friends at the bee place. No, so. I, I, I just mean like... I'd want you don't to want to work either. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hang um, out bees together. <laughs> same, same. They could probably make a business out of it. Honestly, like oh, they seriously Get crafty could. bees, soap, and brews. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, bees, brews, and soap. Bees, booze, and bubbles. Bees. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There's their business. <laughs> okay. Ah, I want to do this. Someone literally asked me the other day and they're like, what's your dream job? Like, do you like being an OT? And while yes, I love being an OT. You're like, I'm, I'm not a podcaster. Oh, that, I didn't say that right. You were like, I'm now a podcaster. I do. Ha I can, you know, technically add that on my resume, but you I'm can. like, but um, I, there's like this meme and it's like, I'm not, I'm not cut out for, for the work life. Mm. I didn't choose this work life. Like, what's that mean? It's like, I'm, I'm not coming. I, I don't want to work. Like, it's like, I just want to be a housewife. <laughs> that meme that says, I don't want to work. LOL. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, Morgan, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm Googling. It meme. sounds great, though. I feel like I would love a meme that says, I don't want to work. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm done. <laughs> Um, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna be able to find the meme, but <laughs> yeah, because what is your definition? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my dream job is not needing one. That would Ooh. work. Oh, this is the, I think this might be the tweet I saw. My dream job is dot, 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 not working. No work. I don't dream about labor. That is me to a T. Whoa. Like I don't have a dream job. Like I enjoy my job. I enjoy helping people. I like my job, but if I won the lottery, I wouldn't work. I'd podcast I'd make fun videos, but like, I don't, I'm not cut out for labor. Well, I think you, you have such a creative brain as well, which is part of it because you, you know, I get bored quickly. Yeah. And you would constantly keep yourself busy and would. would have projects would and volunteer. be making things happen. I'd start a nonprofit. Yeah. I'd probably start a nonprofit rescuing horses and then turning them into therapy horses. Yeah. For people with special yeah. needs and disabilities. I mean, look at this podcast. It's so funny. I was just looking at me and Morgan's old text string from like four months ago or no, it how was long? A year ago. It was a year ago. It was April of 2020. Yeah. And Morgan, yeah, just when the pandemic hit, Morgan texted me and was like, do you want to make a podcast? I want to start a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. We're going to have to post those. But back to this friend. Absolutely love what he's doing. So happy. So, so adorable. So adorable. Uh, so she goes on to say, I'm proud of him. He sells produce and honey at the farmer's market on weekends during the growing season. People act like he must sit around and play video games all day. The things they say are horrible. I had to stop talking to one friend because she told me to divorce him. It's crazy. Wow. So unsupportive. If it was him working and me busting my butt at home, no one would say a thing to me, which is exactly what I was going to say. Like the gender stereotypes, like no one would question the woman staying home, but because it's the man staying home, it's like, yeah, that's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. If a guy wants to stay home and like the wife wants to be the breadwinner and that's a mutual decision. Yeah. Power to you. Amazing. Uh, so that's all she says. But the top comment goes, this sounds like a them problem. Mm -hmm. If it works for you, then it works. Fuck everyone else. I don't get why they're mad about it. They're probably jealous. About what? I mean, we just said we'd want to do that. Yeah, we'd, but we'd I mean... Wanna, you know, have bees and bake soap. But are they jealous that she's making money or they're jealous that her husband's chilling or that her husband is making such an awesome uh, situation for them that when she yeah. gets home, she's so happy and they have all these new friends and all these fun activities. Like what? I'm Their just, life sounds great. Yeah. I, I don't understand. I would just want to be involved. I don't yeah. understand. I almost wonder if it's. I don't understand. I don't get it. I almost wonder if it's a lot to do with just. One, like how we view gender roles and 
you know, our idea of like a typical patriarchal society where the men is the breadwinner and the women stay home typically or stay at home moms. And like, we are really women working and having their own jobs and being able to have an o- their own bank account. That's a recent thing. Yeah, I know. Women That's weren't, crazy. women weren't allowed to have their own bank accounts until like 1970. Yeah. Which I'm going to fact check that. I was actually just talking to Jeff about this because, um, you know, as much as we see ourselves as equals, we also need to recognize that as a woman or as a man, there is a chance that we have experienced the world a little bit differently based off of societal norms that have been placed on the world. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so... It says women could women could open bank accounts in the late like 1960s. However, a lot of banks could not let them get credit cards or open a checking account without I just got to read this. Who did that? You know, who who had the say? Yeah. So, this is um this is an article like on Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And it's a quote that said, when she argued her first case in 1971, many banks still would not issue women credit cards or allow them to open checking accounts without their husband's permission. So yeah, it was the seventies because this equal opportunity, this equal credit opportunity act wasn't passed until 1974. That is so wild. Which was supposed to prohibit credit discrimination on the basis of gender. What year was it that women were allowed to vote? Uh, so women were allowed to vote in the United States um, in 1920. It was the 19th Amendment. But yeah, I think um, this in the same article on Ruth Bader Ginsburg, all of these laws that codified men as the breadwinners and the beneficiaries and women as dependents were declared unconstitutional in those five years. But that was 1974. We're only like 50 years out. Yeah. I mean, even 1920 isn't that long ago. In this, 100 years. And when you look at the history. entire history of the world, it is a drop in time. It is. So, yeah, I think a lot of people, especially if you grew up in a very traditional home, might still have this concept of a patriarchal society mm-hmm. and can't really get past the idea of a man not being a breadwinner. But <sighs> again, like. It makes me so mad at those people. I'm yeah. Just, I think it's the sweetest setup ever. And she sounds happy. He sounds happy. Yeah. Sounds ideal. I love it. I want to be friends with them. I know. I want to have a bee bee hut, bee farm, my own honey. I love buying honey from the farmer's market. That's like my favorite purchase there. Uh, This other allergies too. I know. The pollen does. Mm -hmm. So if you buy the bee pollen, Mm -hmm. especially if it's local pollen from your area, it helps with allergies. I have some in my freezer right now. Uh, This next comment though I really like As a husband who went to part-time so my wife could pursue her career, I appreciate everyone's comments here. I walked away from a director title to take care of my three girls. I've gotten some shit from coworkers for it, and I just don't understand. I feel they'll regret it at 70. Four years later, I don't regret it for a second. My Mm -hmm. oldest turned 16 in three months. I'd never get these days back. Aww. We love a good girl dad. Uh, Your husband sounds like the coolest person I've never met. (laughs) Screw what everyone else thinks. If it works for you, it's a win. Hell yeah. I completely agree. Shitty friends. Same. Get rid of them. We want to be your friends. Call us. Let us know where you live. Yeah. (laughs) Um, If anyone in California has bees that's listening. Morgan loves to get stung, so... Just call her up. No, but you wear a little suit. <laughs> I know. But I, I have seen that video going viral where that woman just oh, straight sh- up sticks her hand in everything. there. She'll like yeah. shake them off. She yeah. had like um, a ball. Like apparently the queen bee was like in it or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But she like shook her hand and they all flew away. It was like, yeah. how aren't they going mad at you? Yeah, but we did have a little incident with Morgan's dog. My dog did get stung by a bee today. <laughs> but I don't care. She's fine. So yeah. invite me to your bee farm if you're in California. Yeah. Or close by. Just bring a just bring a dog suit for Holly. So she's, she's not coming. She doesn't need another vet bill. Holly Holly wants to hang out. With the bees. With the bees. Not a chance. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's uh that's all I got for the friends stories. And you had great contributions as well. 
things, but um, some naked ones. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple other comments on Instagram that were just really great. Um, and a lot of them referred to like how to cut toxic friends out or how to like deal with friends that are being super toxic. And I think there's like definitely steps you can take. Like one, set some boundaries, communicate your feelings to them. Like if they're hurting your feelings and, you know, things like that, really address it before it gets worse. And then if you have addressed it, create some distance really work on, you know, building your other friendships. And three, if none of the above works, cut, cut. Adios. It's not worth it at the end of the day to have unsupportive, toxic friendships. Like life is, life is way too short to be unhappy or have other people treat you like shit. So friends can do some shitty things. And at the end of the day, it's not a reflection on you, and it is when, within your right to create boundaries. Well, it could be a reflection on you. That's why you need to ask if you're the asshole or not. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But if, if, friends, if friends are mean to I you. I know, I know. I'm just but, playing. But yes, you, you might be the asshole. Yeah, we just got to check ourselves. True. Mm -hmm. Very true. Uh, well, thanks, guys, for joining us. I'm not sure if there will be a deep dive from this. I'm trying to think what story. They were all so good. I don't want to skip any. So until next time. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.